All right, bitches, I'm back from vacation, so I'm going to talk about my favorite horror movies. Halloween is pretty close, so I thought this would be a good time to uh, make a, a favorite horror movie list. And um, I'm going to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of horror movies. I think the genre sucks overall, but there are a couple of uh, horror movies I do like, so uh, here they are. <laughs> A Nightmare on Elm Street. Gonna be honest, I'm not really a big fan of movies like Halloween or Friday the 13th. I say this because a lot of people say to me that A Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Halloween, and Friday the 13th are classic horror movies. They're a must watch. And while movies like Halloween and Friday the 13th are fine, they're not really amazing or anything. I'm glad I watched them, but the movie I really enjoyed from that category is A Nightmare on Elm Street. What separates this movie from the other two is that it has cool visuals and a unique premise. It's not a typical slasher. I like the fact that this guy goes in their dreams and kills them because it makes it more intense. It's as if you can't escape him. I also really like the design and concept of Freddy Krueger. He was some creepy old pedophile beforehand and got killed by parents from a burning building, and then he takes his revenge by killing the kids. I mean, yeah, it's kind of silly, but it's an 80s movie, so I kind of give him some passes on that. One thing I won't give him a pass on, despite the movie being from the 80s, is that the music is god-awful. Every single Halloween or horror movie from that decade, they for some reason have horrible music playing in the background. It's incredibly distracting. But other than that, it's a fun film with cool visuals and a pretty disturbing story. <laughs> The Cabin in the Woods. I can't stand parodies of scary movies. They are unfunny, uninteresting, and bland. But The Cabin in the Woods is an exception because it's funny, it's clever, and it's unique. Most of the characters in this movie are pretty bland, maybe except for the stoner. But at the same time, that's kind of the point, seeing how the concept needs these characters to be stereotypes. And if I want this movie to focus on anything, I want it to be the concept, not the characters. It's not a character-driven story. This is one of the few times token characters work. I don't think a lot of people have seen this movie, so I'm not going to spoil anything, but I just want to say the concept of this movie is brilliant. I will say the reason why this movie is so low on the list is because, truth be told it's not that scary there were like one or two scary scenes in this movie but other than that not really but still this movie is incredibly brilliant the exorcist um, your mother sucks cocks and yeah yeah this movie's got unintentionally funny moments but it's still pretty disturbing watching reagan being possessed was Kind of hard to watch, but that's a good thing. Lyndon Blair did a fantastic job as Reagan. She's the reason why this movie is so disturbing. The way she acts, the way she moves, and the way she just sounds is all pretty eerie. The concept of possessions is scary enough, but The Exorcist was able to execute that idea pretty well. This movie also has one of my favorite endings of all time. Damien sacrificing himself for Reagan was perfect. The Exorcist can be a little slow paced at times, especially at the beginning, but once we start hitting the possession stuff, it starts to pick up. Oh yeah, and this movie has a more competent soundtrack than 80s horror movies, which is pretty sad when you think about it. It's a 10 year step back. This movie knows that silence is the best way to create scary scenes. Dante's Inferno. Out of all of the horror movies on this list, this one is definitely the scariest. Now you're probably asking yourself, why is this movie any higher if it's the scariest? Well, Dante's Inferno doesn't really have a story. Yeah, Dante and Virgil explore hell and that's about it. This movie would be a masterpiece if they included characters that were actual characters and a story that was interesting. But to be fair, this movie was made in 1911, so I should just be grateful for getting these stunning visuals because holy shit, these visuals are fantastic. Combining the creative visuals and the black and white eeriness creates a very scary looking movie. And if someone were to ask me what hell looks like, I would just say Dante's Inferno because this is exactly what I would think hell would look like. People suffering, creative and scary looking demons, I mean this movie really nailed it when it came to the designs. I think by far the scariest scene in the movie is when Dante and Virgil confront Lucifer. The character design alone is fucking freaky. But honestly, this whole movie is fucking freaky. The Thing. 
In a way, this movie is like Dante's Inferno, except it has an actual story and characters. Except the visuals themselves aren't as scary as Dante's Inferno, but they're still pretty terrifying. But what makes this movie really scary is the fear of the unknown. We don't really know what this thing is, and even at the end, we don't really find out. But in my opinion, that's what makes the movie better. That way the movie has more rewatch value. Though, the movie by itself is still pretty strong, and I would still rewatch it even without the mystery vibe. The Thing isn't just a good horror movie, but it's also a good movie in general. It has likable characters, it's quotable, it's got a good story going, and that's what makes me appreciate the movie more. <laughs> Evil Dead 2. When I watch a horror movie, I don't want any comedy in it. And unfortunately, a lot of horror movies try to implement comedy. But Evil Dead 2 is an exception. Because the comedy is so bizarre and over the top, it feels like it's part of the movie. Nothing is out of place. And yeah, Evil Dead 2 is a pretty funny movie, but it's also pretty scary. That's a hard feat to do. I think the scariest scene in this movie is the stop motion headless woman. It just looks really eerie. And yeah, I'm not a fan of jump scares, but in this movie it works because it's also played for a comedic effect. So there's something different there, it's not just them jumping onto the screen and trying to scare you as much as possible. It feels like this movie is trying to make you laugh with these jump scares and it works. And as we know, Bruce Campbell's performance is spectacular. Evil Dead 2 also has great action, great effects, and again, it's super funny. <laughs> the Shining. I used to be in the same boat as people when they said that The Shining was boring as shit. But as I grew older, I started to appreciate the movie more. I mean, I can still admit the movie is still pretty slow paced for the most part, but the build up for this movie is fantastic. Jack Nicholson's performance in this movie is one of a kind. It's one of my favorite performances ever. And despite what people say about Shelley Duvall, I think she did an excellent job as well. Even with Stanley Kubrick basically torturing her through the process of making this movie. But going back to The Shining, this is one of those horror movies that doesn't use sound effects and music constantly. I mean, yeah, you'll get them, but most of the time it's silence. And when there are sound effects and music in the movie, it works. Something else that works are, ironically, the slower pacing moments, which is everyone's biggest problem with this movie. I think it makes the scary moments all the more scary, because sometimes we don't expect something scary to happen. I mean, in most horror movies, you can pretty much tell when a scary moment is going to happen, but here, because it moves at such a slow pace, it could come out of fucking nowhere. Kubrick also did this in A Space Odyssey, and while I don't really count that as a horror movie, he still made a lot of moments all the more scary because of the slow pacing. And while The Shining isn't one of my favorite Kubrick movies, it's still a really good movie. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. This one came from the 20s, so it has that advantage of black and white eeriness. And because it came from the 20s, the sets look super fake, but I think that plays to the movie's advantage because the whole story is being told from someone's fantasy. Which means there's a lot of surrealism in this movie, and I love it. That's probably why this movie just feels like a giant nightmare at points. Because I felt like I dreamt some of these scenes in the movie. Kelly Gary himself might be the scariest part of the movie just because of how he looks. Again, this is a movie a lot of people probably haven't seen, so I'm not going to say too much about it. But this movie has a huge plot twist at the end, and it's one of my favorites. And The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is also one of my favorite silent films. Now, I'm not really a big fan of silent films, and even though this movie is nearly 100 years old, I still think it's worth the watch. The Silence of the Lambs this movie has a couple of scary scenes, but it's not that scary overall. There are two reasons why this movie is so high on the list. First reason being, it's just a damn good movie. But the second reason this movie is so high on the list is because it's incredibly disturbing. Like most people, Hannibal Lecter is my favorite character from the movie, but I felt like Buffalo Bill was the most disturbing character. He does make up most of the scary moments in this movie. And I like the fact this movie is so grounded in terms of realism. In my opinion, movies are scarier when they stay grounded and real because you can think to yourself, this could happen to me, or this might happen around the world somewhere. If a horror movie can make you feel like this could happen to you, I feel like it's doing its job well. It also helps when you have the main protagonist feel real. If Clarice was a Mary Sue, it would have ruined the whole movie. Part of this film is immersing yourself in Clarice's position. She's a good, relatable character. And that's what makes the ending really good in this movie, because we see ourselves as Clarice in that situation. I've seen this movie multiple times, and I still plan to watch it again. <laughs> Psycho. 
again, not the scariest movie to me because I've already given that title to Dante's Inferno, but it is overall the better horror movie. Out of all the films on this list, this movie has the best characters, the best story. It's more disturbing than Silence of the Lambs and still does include genuinely freaky moments. The only thing I dislike about this movie is that some parts are a little dated, but then again, this movie did come from the 60s, so I should give it a pass. So what makes this movie so disturbing? Well, Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates. This is some of the best acting I've ever seen. Norman Bates feels like a real person. He's even scary when he's just talking to someone because at any point you know he's gonna burst. He seems like a calm, awkward guy, but people don't know exactly what he is. And luckily for me, I saw this movie without knowing the plot twist, which made it all the more impactful. And just like Silence of the Lambs, it's grounded and real. I could see something like this happening in real life, and that makes it all the more disturbing for me. And yeah, like I said, there are a lot of cheesy moments in this movie, but overall it's pretty competent. Did you agree with our list? Let us know what your top 10 strongest anime characters